Seems like lately we've been seeing a lot more strange form factor PC cases coming to the market. But should we be afraid of strange and different things? Today we have two non-standard form factor PCs from our good friends at MSI. The Vortex and the Aegis. We're going to find out what makes them different and if we should be embracing them or simply stick to what we know. Let's start off with the Vortex. This cylindrical PC might look tiny, but looks, as we all know, can be deceiving. The Vortex is 27.8 centimeters tall and has a volume of 6.5 liters. Now, just to put that into perspective, that's less volume than the Silverstone Raven, as well as the Fractal Design Node 202. Along the exterior, we find some RGB lighting on the Vortex, very sexy. At the front, we have the power button, and at the top of the unit, we have the exhaust for the fan. At the back of the unit is where all the magic happens. And by magic, I mean where you plug in cables and such to get things going. You know what? Never mind. We have a Spadiff out, mic port, headphone port, four USB 3.0 ports, two HDMI ports, two killer E2400 gigabit ethernet ports, two USB type C ports, and finally two mini display ports. And at the very bottom, which you might not be able to see on camera or will show off in B-roll later, is where you plug in the power cable. Yeah, just right out in there. That's where you plug it in. In terms of specs, this particular Vortex is running an i7-6700K clocked at 4 GHz, 32 gigs of RAM, 2 GTX 980s and SLI, a 512 gig SSD, and 1 terabyte of storage. And of course, this is all running on Windows 10. Performance-wise, the Vortex we have here is VR-ready. All the VR content we've tested and we've seen on the channel has actually been running on this very Vortex. Now let's move along to the MSI Aegis. This one is a bit more interesting design-wise. Well, that's kind of subjective, but anyways, it's got this slanted main body on a stand, and the Aegis has a total volume of 19.6 liters, so it's just a little bit over three times the size when compared to the Vortex. Up front, we have the optical drive, which blends in quite nicely into the case. Plus, we have what MSI calls Mystic Lights. You can configure these lights in MSI's Gaming Center. On the left-hand side, we have a USB Type-C port, two USB 2 ports, with one of those being a Supercharger 2 port. On the right, we have some indicator LEDs, a power button, microphone and headphone jack, and at the very top, we have a handle. On the left hand side panel we have a red accent, on the right hand side we have another red accent and some ventilation as well. And the back is where things get more interesting. Right away you'll notice that the motherboard is on the right hand side rather than the left. Also the GPU is where the motherboard would usually be and it's in a vertical orientation. And just below that at the very bottom we have the base of the case which also happens to be the power supply. Let's take a quick look on the inside. With the left hand side panel off, we see an M.2 SSD and one stick of sodium. Might I remind you that this is the back side of the motherboard which is normally used for nothing. So, having the extra stick of sodium there and the M.2 slot is actually pretty innovative. With the right hand side panel off, the first thing you see is the GTX 970. Behind that, of course, we find the blower style CPU heatsink. Now the heatsink is proprietary, but if you ever need to change out GPUs, you have easy access with the Aegis. The top panel of the Aegis comes off as well. Here you have access to the optical drive and a 2.5 inch SSD tray. Underneath the optical tray is two 3.5 inch hard drive sleds. MSI really seems to have put a lot of thought into using the spaces that they had as efficiently as possible. The power supply location on the Aegis is a great idea. Not only does it allow for compartmentalized cooling, but you no longer have to have a power supply sharing the same precious space with your other hardware. Using the back of the motherboard to add in not only a RAM slot, but also M.2 slot, like I mentioned earlier, is pretty smart. And of course, this particular configuration for the Aegis is also VR ready. Now in terms of benchmarks, the Aegis and the Vortex do as well as expected. The Aegis utilizing the 970 received a score of 10,152 in 3D Mark, and the Vortex utilizing two GTX 980s and SLI received a score of 16,890. So in the end, what does this all mean? Well, for one, having a weird form factor for a desktop is quite refreshing. You no longer have to look like everyone else who has a rectangular case from this brand or that brand. Dare to be different. And second of all, having a strange form factor chassis won't affect your performance of your PC if you have the right parts. As a side note, you may have noticed some MSI peripherals in the background in this video. 
MSI peripherals? Yep. They're making mechanical keyboards, laser gaming mice, aluminum mouse pads, and gaming headsets now, so if you need a little more fire of the dragon in your life, they've got you covered. Well, that's it on this video on strange form factor PCs. Click over here for previous videos and check us out over here on Twitter. But as always, like the video, comment below, and let us know what you thought of these odd desktops, and subscribe for more like this from NCIX. We'll see you later.